And as he journeyed, he came near Damascus, and suddenly there shined round about him a light from heaven, and he fell to the earth, and heard a voice saying unto him, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? Acts chapter 9, verses 3 and 4. Hello again and welcome back. Let's continue our journey with the valiant Hidalgo and his savvy squire. Chapter 57 of Don Quixote Part 2 narrates Don Quixote and Sancho's departure from the Ducal Palace. Its humor centers on Altisidora's complaint via a ballad she sings in front of everyone present. The narrator opens by underscoring Don Quixote's intense desire to depart. He imagined that allowing his person to be enclosed and idle was a great error. He twice repeats the term ociosidad, meaning leisure or idleness, and alluding to the abstract Latin concept of otium. The significance of this term in Don Quixote would require a dissertation, but we can make four points. First, Don Quixote's unoccupied state reflects back on the reader who was addressed as idle reader in the first prologue of 1605. Second, adding to this circular effect, we recall that at the beginning of his first sally, Don Quixote expressed the exact same anxiety regarding the world's need for him. Spurring him on was the need that he thought was caused in the world by his delay in chapter two. Third, during the Renaissance, otium, a concept inherited from Cicero and Petrarch, was a positive humanist ideal associated with intellectual refinement and learning about nature and man. But because humanists were often advisors to dukes and kings, the term has political connotations. And in princely advice manuals, it could have negative connotations. Too much thinking, for example, can lead to melancholy and an inability to act. Ironically, near the end of part two, as Don Quixote becomes more reflective, he becomes more melancholy. Finally, both classical nobles and modern merchants regarded a person's work, or negotium, as the negation of her otium. Did you know? Leisure is announced as one of the principal problems of Don Quixote as early as the first chapter. You should know then that the above named Hidalgo, whenever he was at leisure, which was nearly all year around, gave himself up to reading books of chivalry. Speaking of politics, for his part, Sancho's capacity for corruption is the other major theme of chapter 57. He constantly refers to his impeccable reign, even insisting that his wife's gift of acorns to the Duchess cannot implicate him in any dishonesty. I am consoled by the fact that this gift cannot be called a bribe because I was already governor when she sent them. And again, in effect, I entered government naked and I leave it naked, and thus I will be able to say with a clear conscience, which is no small thing, I was born naked and naked I still am. I have neither lost nor gained. Sancho, please. Don Quixote is a weird text, but Sancho's obsession has become meaningfully absurd. Cervantes again alludes to the motif of the provisional leader who serves the state, but then returns to his normal life. American readers should recognize the Cincinnatus legend so popular among the founders, many of whom, by the way, were avid readers of Don Quixote de la Mancha. Quixotic mission. What does the Latin term negotium mean? A, Donald Trump, B, art, C, lack of leisure time. Correct answer, C, lack of leisure time. An interesting detail undercuts Sancho's claims of innocence. Sancho was atop his ass with his saddlebags, case, and provisions overjoyed because the Duke's mayordomo, the one who had been Trifaldi, had given him a small purse with 200 gold escudos to cover the costs of the trip, and Don Quixote still knew nothing of this. Wow, what did Sancho do to deserve this money? 
Recall that Sancho turned down this exact sum from Ricote. And why are we told that Don Quixote is still unaware of this? Don Quixote seems unknowingly implicated in Sancho's corruption. That's all for now. Find out what happens with our characters in our next discussion of this fascinating novel. If you liked this video and want to continue learning more about the knight errant Don Quixote de la Mancha, you can subscribe to our YouTube channel here. Also, you can enroll in our free online course on Don Quixote by clicking here.